Welcome back to FacetNet. I'm going to show you how to install Landsweeper on this computer. So let's install Landsweeper just by double clicking and if you want to download the software you have to go to Landsweeper site and it will send the trial key. Make sure you download the trial key and keep it. So um, once the file is downloaded we can just go double click and start the installation. So we can go with the standard installation which is using the SQL local database or you can use your real SQL or ultimate version of your SQL right depends on the way how you want to implement you can do that right um, let's go next it's going to use the default port uh, website ports on port number 80 and then it's going to use the HTTPS ports on port number 82 so 81 and 82 the reason why we are missing or we are not using port number 80 is just because port number 80 is used for web services and we don't want to use this one in the web services port. So we are using the port number 81 and 82. Click next. It's going to install in the C program folder. Click next. Now it's just installing the application. Of course, it's required some dependency packages. So it's installing .NET Framework. 4.8 once we complete the dotnet framework 4.8 we will continue to the installation process all right it looks like we need uh, to reboot the system um, let's wait this one once it's done we'll reboot the system as well right um, so it's installing the file here we go the installation is completed click finish and you can open through um, explorer lands with that's the website it just goes to the website for the the rest of the installation configuration so i'll just minimize that and we'll need to reboot it so let's reboot the system first Right, here we go. We can see now it's launching through the web browser. Click accept. Uh, this is just because of the Internet Explorer security essential. So let's um I'm going to just disable this for administrators so that we won't be getting this notification every time. So let's go to IE enhancement and turn uh, off for the administrator one. Close. Uh, so now we can see it's just updating the script files. Uh, let's wait for the update to complete it. Right, the update is complete. Right, now we can see and it's asking for the key. So I have got the keys with me. I'm just going to copy and paste the keys from my file. So the key is in my download folder. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it here right continue right so it's going to add the next within five minutes will be ready right click next now this is going to detect um, the network in my case here i'm running this virtual machine on vmware but it's using the ip address if you look at the ip address of this machine It's 32.1100. So the network is 192.168.32. We can see it just detects that network, right? So it got the network and it detects the types of the asset I have on this network. So it detects that there is a Windows machine or there are some Windows clients, uh, there are some Mac or Linux based network devices are there, VMware clients, right? I don't have any of the other devices. So this is pretty smart, right? So it detected already my network. It detected my network and then it has found that these types of devices are available on my network, right? So what credentials we have to use? So it's asking for the credential option. On the next screen, you will be asked to submit the credential for your assets, right? So that it can. So why they need the credentials? I used to log in to the assets to retrieve the data. Without the credentials, scan data would be limited. 
So the credential passwords are encrypted with a unique key and cannot be viewed by anyone, right? So it's asking for the password. This is the machine um, that I am using here. So it's just found the password. Right, so now it's asking for the, uh, my Mac computer, I'm not going to use the password here for my Mac computer because it's outside of my this virtual network, so I'm not going to use it. I'll skip that one, I don't want it. SMTP, public, yep. Uh, I can go back, SMTP, SNMP, simple network monitoring protocol, right? Uh, public, next. Right, so VMware vCenter, I don't have VMware vCenter here, so I can skip that. And then it's just scanning the number of devices on this network. Since I'm just scanning for only 32 network, 32 network has got only two computers here, the domain controller and the uh, machine here. If you want, or if you want, what we can do is I can add some more machines. I can add a Hyper-V machine here on this network just to make sure that we will have more devices on this network right so that's pretty much it has done the work it just can even before I complete or before I start the uh, hyper server. now we can see um, the land sweeper is ready with the trial version right so what we can see from here on the main page I can see the domain name of this machine and there is four red lines, right? So one server and not, we'll come back and see details later on, right? And it's using the local subnet as in the same machine subnet and it detects some other devices like as in, you can see here, it detects some switches, 64-bit computers, um, the reason that we don't see the other ones because the other virtual machines are running on a different network. If you wish, we can add the networks and we can do it later on, right? Um, so the types, it's all Windows machine here, you can see. It's all Windows machine, DC1, right, that's the one. Hyper-V, this is my Hyper-V server. So if you look at this machine, the name of this machine, is Hyper-V01. So you can see it says Hyper-V01. Veeam is the same machine itself, right? And Windows 10 and the other two Windows machine, it detects these two machines, but the reason why you can't see them, the, these machines are inside my Hyper-V server, right? So if you look at the Hyper-V server, I have these two machines. One of the machine is the replica, the other one is the original machine. So I'm just going to start this machine. Make sure that I can detect them as well here. Right. So scan. It says last try, so it just picked it up. So I can just scan it again. Right. So we can go to assets and we can do another scan here. Hyper-V guest, virtual machine, right? Uh, so let's let's go through it. You see here there's a rescan option. Let's do a rescan to find out the machines. So we can see pretty much what else we can see from here. If you look at this machine, it tells you the details about this operating system. It tells you it's, it's a type of Windows, the login user, operating system built version of the operating system, right? Um, the domain, the manufacturer, so it's running on a VMware. It's just got two GB mesh um, RAM CPU type. No antivirus installed. That's a dangerous part of it, but it's just a virtual machine. I'm gonna shut it down after this, right? Right after this, I'm gonna just shut it down. Um, and it, it tells you almost everything, right? And then you go to config, right? Um, so here we can do all the other sort of configurations, right? The operating system level configurations, and it tells you what's inside the operating system, the memory base, right? Go to softwares. It tells you the install softwares on this system. It can monitor the performances. 
or you can add the performance monitor. But if you go here, you can add the performance monitor. So I'm just going back to assess. Um, so you can see that it detects a lot of devices now. This is my VMware gateway or, or VMware virtual router. Right, you can see that's the gateway router, right? So it detects that. It detects the replica server, right? It detects some of these servers from here as well, right? The Windows servers. So pretty much it finds a lot of assets here, right? So, so we don't need to risk anything here. Let's go to one device. So I was looking at one device. So performance, right? Here we can do check the performances, right? So it's just need to start the performance if you click here. You have to start this performance. So the one that I'm here, I'm interested more into here, easy one. Right. Uptime, it tells you when this was up, when this was down, and it tells you the location. So you can add locations, depends on the um, way how these devices are configured, you can add the locations, all right? Uh, event logs, reports, history. So you can see this gives you a lot of information, right? A lot of information about the the machine, right? It gives you almost every information about the systems. Um, so let's go back to dashboard. So this is sort of my teams, right? So if you go here, you can see the team members and you can just start creating sort of tickets and stuff like that. All right, so you can create ticket and you can attach the tickets as well, all right? So that's that's another advantage here. So that's my ticketing. So asset groups and alerts, right? So it, it, it gives you a lot of information, a lot of information, right? Um, so you can see the softwares. If you go here, it tells you what sort of software is installed on these systems, um, on the Windows machines, right? Um, we can find those information ticketing information, calendar, uh, configurations, that's the notification configuration for this system itself, right? We can do a lot of configuration for your land sweeper. So you can customize your land sweeper based on your need, right? So you can set up email notifications here, right? And email, then you can set up an email notification here. Um, you can create ticket contents, right? What should be in the tickets, right? Um, user access, right? So you can configure levels of accesses, right? So every user you can create user pages. So it has a massive number of features, and we can do a lot of other stuff. And and the advantage is we have got the widgets. So if you want to do things, we have widgets as well here. So pick the widgets that you want to do, right? to alert or to do something. So for example, if you want to do some alerts, Active Directory users and all use, right? So um, if you click on that, right, just put a, somewhere here, right. Um, what else we can see here? The interesting one, IP locations, softwares, right? So if I go back to dashboard, it tells you the employees from the Active Directory. Right? It gives you every information about that. Reports, you can have the reports. Right. So I've just gone through the basics of Land Sweeper. Right. Um, what I do in another video, I'll go through step by step um, through detailed information. So what we can do is we can add a new asset. You can add a new asset here, right? So if you buy a product, you can add when did you buy, um, all these warranties and every information you can add into this system, right? Uh, leave this one, right? 
you can add the new location if your company has got multiple branches you can add the locations all right um yeah so pretty much i've just walked through the basics of land sweeper all right um if you need more information about land sweeper just let me know i will create a video based on your requirements the one that i'm using is a uh, trial license all right uh, purchase once you can go here and you can purchase your land sweeper um, so if you want to buy the land sweeper to manage if your company has got multiple devices i'm sure that it is one of the best way to monitor your devices all right all right so i'll stop at this point and make sure you do subscribe to my youtube channel face it net um, to see more interesting videos on these products thanks for watching thanks